Hi, I'm Matthew Mitchum. I am former diver, I'm the first openly gay Olympic gold medalist and a recovering drug addict. I started using drugs uh, as a teenager. Uh, it started, you know, with alcohol, marijuana. Um, when I turned 18, it turned into party drugs. Um, and then I met someone um, who, you know, was using crystal meth. Um, we became boyfriends. Um, and, you know, I, I stopped doing sport. Um, I, I took a break from sport for a year and my use got pretty bad. Um, but then I started diving again before the Beijing Olympics and went cold turkey off everything and uh, did very well um, in Beijing, won a gold medal. Uh, and then afterwards I started partying again. Um, but I started my use, I, I don't know, I guess because of who I was and I was in the public eye, all my use then became secret, like not even with my boyfriend. And uh, that's when it really got out of control. Um, so it was just occasionally at first and then it, I guess it progressed to you know, I'd do five days on, five days off, and then sometimes I wouldn't even do five days off. And yeah, it just, it got really um, out of hand. It got, yeah, to a point of absolute desperation because most of the time I was promising that I wouldn't use again. Every single time I detoxed, I would not, I promised myself with every single cell in my body that I would not use again. And every single time I just could not keep that promise. My first breaking point was probably when the consequences looked like they were becoming very, very real. Um, and I was at a point of desperation that I, I knew that I couldn't stop by myself for a very long time. I'd known that for quite a while, but it was when other people were starting to find out about it. I couldn't hide it from my partner. I couldn't, it, it was impacting my life and I couldn't, you know, do my job. I couldn't do my sport that's when it was uh, yeah i yeah I, I guess that's where the the point that i needed to make a change came because i didn't want drugs to take away my entire life when i did get to the point that i realized that i needed to do something uh i i went to rehab and actually that was kind of a last resort for me because i did try and stop by myself for at least six months. Um, and when I realized that I just couldn't do it by myself, I went to rehab and, uh, and that was a game changer for me because my problems weren't just with drugs. My problems had a lot to do with self-esteem, uh, with validation, with, um, with depression and anxiety. So I, I had a lot of underlying reasons for why I was using drugs. And so, yeah, rehab for me was a game changer. I found it incredibly helpful. That was really just step one though. There had to be a lot of, um, of maintenance after that. I had to make my recovery part of my lifestyle. And so I, you know, I did a lot of sort of 12 step meetings um, and a lot of psychology as well. And I think that's the only reason uh, I was ever able to get any recoveries because I had made recovery a part of my life, a part of my daily life. I'm very lucky that I really did throw myself into kind of into recovery with everything that I had because I knew that this was a life or death thing for me. I had learnt a lot of tools to, you know, kind of uh, like urge surfing, I guess, was one where you just kind of ride the wave and and see it for what it is. Like it's just a craving and it will peak and you'll reach your crest and then the urge will go away and dissipate. And it's just about, you know, resisting that compulsion to act on every single urge like that. When I was having big feelings, figuring out what was within my control to change and what was not within my control that I just had to accept. And so every time I had a feeling, literally, I would just kind of run through it like, can I change this feeling or not? You know, and <laughs> um, you know, that was, that was a big thing for me, but yeah, it was, it was very um, all consuming uh, at the beginning. And, and I guess that's what it needed to be because my, my addiction was all consuming. And so my, my recovery from drugs had to be all consuming. Cravings in the beginning were 
nuts, like super, super intense. Everything was a trigger and any feeling was a trigger. I guess all of my thinking patterns as well were all kind of geared towards using drugs as a solution, you know? And so um, it was a lot of retraining my brain uh, in the beginning because all of those thinking patterns were all automatic. You know, it was always my first thought was always the solution is drugs. And I had to catch that and go, let's kind of redirect this thought or, you know, is drugs really the best solution for this or learning using drugs is a very, or, or sex are very powerful ways to change your feelings, but they're also very crude tools because they have a lot of consequences. And so part of my recovery was sort of learning more effective ways to change my feelings or to, to cope with my feelings that don't come with all of the consequences that drugs and or sex come with. And so that really helps with the, you know, the, the, the thinking pattern of like, you know, drugs being a solution to change how I feel. Actually, I don't need all of those consequences. Let's try this solution instead. And the more you practice that, the more automatic it becomes. And eventually over time, that first thought stops becoming uh, going to drugs, especially if you really focus on attaching all of the consequences to drugs. And I think that was, that was the game changer for me uh, in the beginning was having a realistic look at, at you know, how effective really drugs and, and sex are as a solution to my problems. Because when you attach all of those consequences to it, then you can't help but think of drugs as consequences rather than solutions. Uh, yeah, and, and I think that's how, how the automatic sort of thing started to drift more towards the healthier solutions for me. Loneliness and isolation provided a wonderful environment for my addiction to thrive in because I, I craved connection and also being isolated meant that, that there were no barriers or obstacles in the way of me actually using drugs, you know. I had a very, very small life. I didn't realise how much loneliness and isolation had contributed to my addiction until I stopped using, you know, and, and threw myself into, you know, recovery communities. And they are communities. And there are lots of connections there. And it was the connection that I found to be wonderfully powerful and therapeutic and esteeming and, you know, provided wonderful distractions and, um, and made me feel good about myself. Like, you know, having all of these friendships and relationships, like healthy relationships with people that occupied my time, that took my mind off using. I'm a huge, huge advocate of, you know, the saying that connection is the opposite to addiction. I've had friends who have died um, because they never managed to get sex and drugs unlinked. And so when they were trying to get sober, they were missing sex too much and it ended up leading back to drugs again. So that's why I'm so passionate really about, um, you know, about controlling chemsex and, and working with them and, and getting the message out there because I just hear the stories over and over and over and over again about about guys who are too scared to have sex um, because they've never had sex sober or, or it's too much of a trigger for them. When it comes to the fear, I always, I always say, I mean, I always talk about how wonderful and beautiful I find sober sex. You know, sometimes I'm almost kind of envious of people who, who've never had sober sex because it's almost as if they be experiencing it for the first time it's a beautiful thing being present in the moment and you know and feeling all of those sensations and I always say to focus on the process of it you know rather than because I, I know I know for me I can become a bit too goal oriented and just try and focus on the outcome which means I'm not actually enjoying the process which makes the outcome harder to actually get to so I try and remove any pressure to reach a finish at all for me. 
and just make a commitment to myself to just enjoy the process, whatever the process is, however far it goes, to just enjoy every moment, every sensation, uh, or, or just experience it, even if you don't enjoy it, and, and kind of and and be uh, be present enough to go, okay, that's not for me, but this is, and um, and that itself is what sober sex is for me, and that's what I find really really enjoyable. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> Harm minimization and self-will did not work for me. I needed a, like a big circuit breaker, basically. And so that big circuit breaker for me was going to rehab and that got me some momentum and a lot of education. So there was a lot of um, psychology work in there, um, which was a lot of sort of retraining the mind, um, finding sort of alternative solutions like mentally um, instead of, you know, kind of reaching for drugs. Um, and also some lifestyle sort of training. Um, you know, I joined a recovery community, so I was uh, I was doing meetings every day, which was extremely helpful for me. And that again was part of the retraining of the mind. A huge fear that I had before getting sober was that I that life would be boring. When I got sober and had a real look at my addiction and everything I was doing in an addiction and was very realistic about how much joy I was actually having and how much fun I was actually having, it kind of made me realize that, that, that I, <laughs> I was pretty miserable most of the time. I have experienced genuine, genuine joy, genuine pleasure, uh, genuine fun, genuine happiness, like probably because I was focusing on it, you know, because I was actually kind of cleaving away, you know, all of these unhealthy things that were uh, contributing to my addiction and just kind of starting from a much healthier baseline. And then when you add on top all of those really healthy behaviors, when you add on top, you know, uh, mental wellness and, um, you know, and for me, like meditation and mindfulness and and then adding on, you know, connection. I mean, connection with people is where you experience real joy. And I never, I never had meaningful, genuine connections that had to do with having fun or, or, or actual joy. I have experienced genuine joy uh, and genuine happiness. And yes, there have been some, you know, life is hard sometimes. Like you, you do have to live life on life's terms things will happen, people will die, you will lose friends, you will have falling outs, you will fight. But if you use, those things are still going to exist, that pain is still going to exist, but then you also have the consequences of what you've done, like of, of your using. So if you just get through that stuff, then you put yourself in a much better position to experience happiness and joy again much, much sooner than if you return to drugs. After the gold medal and after becoming number one in the world and, uh, and not it not really filling that hole that I thought it would, I realized that, at the, and that, you know, and my addiction was just getting worse and worse and worse after that. Yeah, I realized that, um, well, I guess for me, that's where rehab was instrumental in changing everything, because that's where I learned that I do have such low self-esteem, or that I, I don't have any self-esteem. All my esteem comes from other sources, you know, other people. And so I learned how as well how to actually generate self-esteem and so for me that i've learned the easiest way for me to generate self-esteem is to be of service to others to help others without expecting anything in return like that's the golden ticket but even you know just any act of service to anybody else helping anybody else doing sharing my story which in my mind helps other people all of that it makes me feel better about myself it makes me feel like a good person and like i'm doing good work and and making a positive contribution to the world. I'm much happier being sober. I enjoy sex more sober, and my life is better than it's ever, ever been. Mm -hmm.